In today's thrift store challenge, we will be headed off to Pottery Barn to get loads of inspiration for fall and all of the things. And then we are headed over to the thrift store to see what we can come up with for a whole lot less. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. One of the easiest ways to transition your current decor into the fall season is to switch up some of your textiles. So your throw blankets, your throw pillows. However, paying those Pottery Barn price tags can be quite costly. So I do recommend going to the thrift store and seeing what you can find. I did find this crate and barrel blanket, but it was not in the best condition. So I decided to pass on it. And I'm glad that I did because I ended up finding this beautiful knit throw originally from the hearth and hand line and was just five dollars all that i needed to do now was just wash the blanket and then i let it dry flat and this was the end result i placed it in my bedroom space it has this really nice texture and it's perfect for the upcoming fall season Another area of textiles that I really like from Pottery Barn, but I don't necessarily love the price tag are their dining and kitchen textiles. So like your hand towels, your tablecloths, napkins, things like that. And while I was thrifting in Cleveland, I found this William Sonoma brand new hand towel. Now I only found one of them, but I only really needed one for this little styling vignette. And I think it's the perfect addition for the upcoming fall season. Pottery Barn is definitely known for having these really grand floral arrangements in the store, but one single stem can cost you upwards around $80. So when I was at my local thrift shop, I found this huge bundle of fall florals for just $1.25. And you guys might remember when I flipped this large scale vase. So I decided to place this dried eucalyptus inside of this vase. And I think it looks so perfect for fall and it really makes an impact. While we're on the subject of florals, one thing I like to do when I'm on Pottery Barn's website is look at their wreaths. They don't carry that many in the store, so I like to look there for some inspiration. Then that way, when I'm at the thrift store, I kind of have an idea of what I'm naturally gravitated towards. So my sister had said that she wanted a magnolia wreath. I actually had picked up this huge bundle of magnolia stems previously, and I just filled in the gaps where they needed to be filled in. And I feel like this is a nice wreath that can transition you from summer to fall really well. Next up, let's talk about some artwork. So in Pottery Barn, they actually don't carry that many pieces of artwork unless they are returned. So I love to go on the website again to look for inspiration to see the things that I naturally like. A style of artwork that I really love, especially for the fall months, are these kind of moody artwork sketches. So I found this one and it was going to be perfect on top of this dresser. So I wanna just quickly run through some ideas when you're doing kind of smaller dresser styling. So you usually wanna start off with like a mirror or an artwork piece and then some decorative accents. So I already had the lamp, but when I saw the candelabra, I thought it was perfect. I've been wanting to incorporate more silver into my space. So I really liked this candelabra here and it was just a few dollars as well as this kind of beaker style of a vase. I went to my garden and I clipped some hydrangeas and placed them inside this vase. I thought the overall composition of the vase to the candelabra with the photo and the lamp, everything is at a different height and it looks really pulled together, but it was all done on a thrifted budget. Pottery Barn is one of those stores that really dedicates an entire section to lanterns and they are quite expensive. So when I see good lanterns at the thrift store, I always pick them up. So I found this lantern here for just $5 and all it really needed was a good cleaning. So I just did so using some Windex and then I also found a candle to place inside of here and this only cost me $6.25 at Pottery Barn would have cost me a small fortune. Moving along into some of the kind of Halloween specific decor, Pottery Barn does it better than anybody in my opinion. They still make it feel high end, but beyond being super expensive, oftentimes the best things sell out. So I loved these terracotta pumpkins, but of course they are sold out. So I went to the thrift store, I grabbed two kind of jack-o'-lantern style pumpkins that were ceramic, and I just gave them a few coats of some metallic bronze spray paint, and then I sealed them. Once those were dry, the thing that I needed to do to kind of give it that aged look that these pumpkins had from Pottery Barn was to add a lot of texture. So I started with some mortar mix mixed with some black paint and I just applied one layer on the inside of the pumpkin and then the outside and just kind of dabbed it around with a paper towel. 
this is kind of how that looked which was fine but I wanted there to be more of a brown hue to the pumpkin so I decided to do the mud trick which is basically just grab mud from the outside and let it drip all over the pumpkin to give it this sort of aged look. When these jack-o'-lantern pumpkins were sold on Pottery Barn's website, they were quite expensive. So the fact that I only spent $2.50 for this project is a real steal. However, one of the pumpkins they did have in stock were these pumpkin pillows. And I loved all of the colors and the textures they were using on these pillows. They're more just for decorative purposes and not to actually sit on or lay on. So I actually ended up picking up this green one here and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I did want to see though what I could come up with from the thrift store. So I found this green Sherpa hoodie that was just $1.50 because it was half off. And then this circular pillow was also half off at the Goodwill. So all in at $3. I started out by just removing that bottom band and top section of this hoodie and then taking a needle and thread and I'm going to do a running stitch. To do a running stitch, all you need to do is put the two pieces of fabric together and move the threaded needle in and out of the fabric, not closing it off on either side so that way you can cinch both pieces together by pulling on both sides of the thread and then just sewing all of that together. I then flipped the fabric right side out and I placed the pillow inside making another running stitch at the top. Then I took some twine that I had on hand and I'm just going to wrap it around the pillow several times so then that way it creates a more pumpkin like shape and tied that in a really tight knot so you can kind of see these little divoted sections there. With the pillow essentially complete, I just now needed to make a stem. So I just grabbed a tail from one of my kids stuffed animals that I flipped inside out just so I could get the basic structure of the stem and then I wrapped that around with twine once and connected the stem to the pillow using needle and thread. I ended up wrapping the stem a few more times with twine just so the scale seemed a bit more appropriate. So on the left is the $3 DIY thrifted pumpkin pillow and on the right is the $60 pumpkin from Pottery Barn. So I think having two green pumpkin pillows for the season is just slightly excessive. So if there's any one of you out there that wants this Pottery Barn pumpkin pillow, make sure you leave me a comment down below saying so and I will gladly send this off to one of you. Now as for last week's giveaway, I'm gonna pop up the winner on the screen now. So just make sure if that's you, you're checking back on your comment that you left. Moving right along into ceiling light fixtures, this is where things can get quite expensive at Pottery Barn and other high-end stores. And at the thrift store, it's definitely kind of like a gamble because you're taking it home and you obviously don't know if it's going to work. So I decided for $3, it is worth the gamble and I'm gonna try it out. Capus shell lighting is very popular in home decor, anthropology, crate and barrel, pottery barn, all carry several variations of Capus ceiling light fixtures. So when I saw this one, I thought that it would be a nice project to try what I had in mind, which was basically just to kind of eliminate this kind of cheap looking silver and add a brass detail instead. So I'm gonna remove all the parts that I need to so that way I can take some gold leaf paint and just paint all around the sections that I I need. If I get some of the gold leaf on the capis, the only thing I recommend doing is honestly to just take some goof off and just buff that right out. So that way you have the paint on the areas that you need to. I ended up doing two coats just so that way it was really well covered and the color I used was in gold leaf and then my husband installed the ceiling light fixture into my daughter's space and this is how it turned out. And last but certainly not least is talking about Pottery Barn Kids, which is an extension of Pottery Barn geared towards children, which I have two small kids. So of course I want to give them beautiful and nice things, but I don't want to break the bank to do so. So when I found this easel, it was just $6 and then I had 20% off. So I thought this would be the perfect project to do a quick little furniture flip for my daughter's room as well. So I just basically took it apart down so then that way I could spray paint everything individually so everything was nice and smooth and of course you just want to tape off areas so that 
paint does not build up on there so that way you can screw everything back together and it's really well solidified. I wiped everything down with a furniture cleaner that I can link down below for you guys and you obviously just want to save all of your parts so you can reassemble when the painting is over. I ended up using this one by Magnolia Home in the color Ella Rose and that's only because this is going in my daughter's space. You guys know typically I would go more neutral but I thought that this was just nice and pretty and pink for her room. I gave three light coats to this piece, again, separating anything that can be separated. And that's really just so you can get the cleanest finish overall. Of course, I could have left everything kind of together and spray painted it, but I think because I separated it, you just get that much better of a result in the end. After all the coats of chalk paint, it's then super important to seal it. So I will link down below the sealer I like to use when I use a chalk style paint. As for the backing to the dry erase, and chalkboard, I actually had to put a different contact paper down first because this contact paper was not sticky enough to uh, be attached to the particle board on the back directly. So I decided to just add a different contact paper first and then this one because I just loved the print so much and I think it's just a fun surprise, something somewhat unexpected that makes it just look and feel a little bit more high-end and intentional. And that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments which find or project was your favorite, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.